Come on in. Hi. Hi. I'm Rick. So Rick. Nice to meet you. You too. Thank you. Uh, He's my good boy. I've had him for Let's how long have I had him? His uh, name is Monic, and I've had him for, gosh, um, uh, eight years. I adopted him from an animal shelter in, in Boston. Really? Uh, he loves cats, so he's uh, good at um, uh, sort of being their babysitter when I've got sick ones in the office, mm-hmm. like these two. Hey. Anthony, I think you know Sophie. Hey, Sophie, Sophie. how's it going? Hi, hey, how are you? I like Lella. We adopt more pit bulls than any other breed. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I get a lot of calls. That, see, I used to be known as the pit bull rescuer oh, back in the day when pit bulls were mostly being put down at the yeah. SPCA. And people would joke and say you should change your name to Sophie's pit bull rescue. Uh, but, uh, yeah, people would complain and say, now, it's the new, oh, don't we have pit bulls at the SPCA? <laughs> yeah. Little dogs. And so, yeah, pit bulls are such a wonderful, wonderful breed. And my first two, I was a bit skeptical because, mm-hmm. like everybody, you know, you get yeah. you to know them until you realize they're not what they're portrayed to be. Yeah. And I thought, what are the odds that I have two pit bulls that are the exception? Yeah. So then I kind of dug into it more, and uh, I have a red nose myself. <laughs> so is Alana going to be uh, assisting us, or is uh, I'm going to have Anthony uh, listen in on some of the okay. stuff because a lot right. of the effects are. Relationship with the public and what have you. Okay. And, um, okay. and Anthony, your role, your time. I do. I do communication, and I'm in charge of development. So okay. everything that's events, fundraising, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, so um, I don't know where. It's a long start. story, yeah, but let's start, start, start. I guess, with Natalie Pinel. With Natalie Pinel, I guess that would okay. be uh, the first thing. I have. That's why I'm a bit disappointed that Alana's not there because. She knows exactly who Natalie is. Okay. Um, Rick and I, Rick has grown up with... In the rescue me. world. Yeah. In the rescue. As he got into his 20s, he decided there's always legal fights yeah. in this world, in the rescue world, so he decided to, you know, be like my sidekick and get involved in doing the, uh, the legal stuff. But yet over the years, he's heard me talk about these names. He's heard yeah. me speak to these people. He's heard me talk to other rescues about so and so and that one and how horrible and and so Alana has known about ladies like Cindy Jean Vray, um, Barbara Lisbona, yep. Monica Campo, Natalie Canal and company. Uh, there's many more, I'm not sure how many more uh, Alana knows. Who's aware of, it, aware of But she's aware of what we call the clique, the original okay. clique that goes back to the 90s. Now I started rescue in the 90s and therefore I met these people thinking, oh, wow, there's yeah. other people who rescue, how wonderful. Yeah. And soon realized it was not what it seemed to be. Okay. There was a lot of bitching back and forth. There was a lot of... I am know, shocked. Shocked. <laughs> that it's no. well, what I've come to realize is it's mostly women. And unfortunately, women are like that. And in general, you know, there's a big majority of women whose emotions take over. And then they don't like the way this one's doing it, the way that one's doing it. They're better and this and that. And for different reasons, there was a lot of bitching. So... To make a long story short, back in 01, uh, I was Brand. I was involved in a situation where Angela Brand, who had the Operation Second Chance of Dolphin at the time, had taken three dogs in rescue on the recommendations at the time of Mr. Barnati, who used her for you know. Foster, she was a foster, foster home. She was a foster home for the SPCA. He guaranteed us that she had a quarantine room. She had rent. She was you know, she showed pictures of the last inspection. 
So this lady went and put these three dogs there in quarantine. Turned out to be a horror story. Mm, we busted in there on January 3rd or something at like 11 p.m. We were sure Alan Beerbrier was going to pull off the shotgun off the wall and shoot at us. Mm. I didn't know these people's names or who they were at the time, but this is 11, 12 years ago. And Yellow Brand, it was very obvious to me she was a hoarder. She may have at one point been a woman who had good intentions, off. loved animals, mm -hmm. but what I saw there, dying dogs on the floor and whatnot, blew my mind. Now that's when I first heard of Natalie Pinnell, because as soon as this happened, I was the only one of the four that were there who wanted to lay charges, to call the SPC and to press charges. Of course, everybody was saying, oh, they're just going to come and seize all the cats, and they're all going to be killed, and the dogs, and you know. And at the time, I said, if that's what they feel is the best for these animals, then be it. I don't believe the SPC is going to come in and seize and euthanize everything without, you know, there's a process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that same week, Natalie Pinnell, after the, the report was filed. Just before the report. Just before she tried to... Okay, but that's the, the SPCA the was already aware because but it took see, time listen, to, file to file the report. We had to file a complaint. Yeah. At first they thought it was... A, Farnati had me describe the house because he couldn't believe what I was saying. He thought I was another one of these, you know, trying to put mm -hmm. down another rescue. So eventually a, a full complaint was opened. Yeah. Natalie had called me and said, Oh, I'm Natalie Pinnell. I work with Anne. You know, she's wonderful. da 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 She has a vet in Ottawa. And she pleaded with me not to get the SPC involved. So what I seen was horror. I couldn't. Mm -hmm. You know, I was fairly new five years in rescue, and I'd never seen anything like this. So yeah. to me, it was a reason. So the SPC complaint was made, but it took a few days before they went to make their inspection. Okay. At the time, we knew there was a mole within the SPCA uh -huh. who had told these people somehow that the SPC was coming. Because in fact, when they came, there was no dead dogs or dying okay. dogs. They had, there was no more dogs. And I felt bad because I thought, oh, what did she do with them? Yeah. But there was the cats. They were seized or she was... There was some kind of procedure. She benefited from a non-judicial court because of some offense and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I swore to Anne that my mission was not just rescuing animals now, but it's avoiding this kind of situation from happening with her again. I never thought there was hundreds of her. Yeah. I thought she was an exceptional case. Years later, of course, I hear from Natalie Pinnell, I rescued dogs from Anne Villebrand's place because she's still hiding somewhere and got dogs in bad shape. Sylvie Jean Vres, I've got to rescue a dog from her. People are describing that you can smell the place a mile away. If you don't find it on a map, you can just follow your nose and find it. You know, I've seen mm -hmm. the dogs. I had a dog who almost died on me that just came out of there. She'd had this dog two weeks and it was just horrible, fungus everywhere, I mean, just yeah. really bad shape, uh, theometria. That's what we found out that he was like that. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, over the years, these names have come up again and again and again, um, and then there was the whole Barnati thing, everything fell down, and then Alana took over, and Alana was out there doing some bus. A few raids happened, and I was like, yeah, Alana, you're doing it, you know, puppy mills mostly. Mm -hmm. But with Alana over those years when she was here, mm -hmm. uh, we discussed the hoarding situation in Montreal because she is aware of it from years back. Probably not aware as much as, as how extensive it is, mm -hmm. but she is aware of the names. Janine Larose, Nathalie Pinel, Monica Jean-Cas, Nicole yeah. Jean-Cas, Rose from RR in Ontario. Yeah. These are all names that she knows. Mm -hmm. And she knows their reputation in the real rescue world, not in the hoarding world, because in the hoarding world, they protect That's one another. There's a whole network. Now, we know for a fact, we've always assumed that Danielle Davenport was the leak. Every time there was to be an inspection somewhere, every time there was a complaint filed, the SPCA got there, of course, everything was hunky-dory, because they had someone. And they had up. That Davenport's name has come up again and again and again over the years now. I know for a fact, been confirmed by many people, that Natalie Pinnell knows him directly. Whether it's a personal relationship or just a business relationship over the last 20 years, but she knows him pretty much since he began. I don't know when he began, but let's say he began in the 90s, late 90s. She knows him at least... In 1986. Okay, so she knows him from a long time ago. Back Whether it's from him inspecting her or not. It could be okay. from him going to do inspections. What well, we know there's because a... She has been kicked out of Delphine Pierre, she's been kicked out of Lachine, she's been kicked out of this and that. And, and these people 
as you may have heard of my and my son's reputation, we're mm-hmm. fighters. Mm-hmm. So these people over the last 10 years have Hold called up. me for mm-hmm. advice. How do we get them to not come in? You know, why can't they leave us alone? And I have fought the city on the constitutional issue of an inspector, a canine inspector, forcing his way into my place, threatening to have me arrested if I don't let them in without warning, to count and see how many dogs and how many dogs with no tags. I have been to court for this. Alana's father at one point represented my son because he was ticketed after telling the city, come back with the police. They came back, they took pictures, they did everything, they harassed him, the police checked his ID, and they gave a ticket for refusing access the first time. So Alana's father helped, and it was, unfortunately, the law was... A municipal battle. municipal battle. So municipal eventually, court. over my battle with the years of being harassed by the canine inspector, one in particular, I took it to Superior Court in 2010 for a particular case of a dog named Tyson that had bit a dog that the city wanted to kill and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I did this like a big girl, and, uh, you know, I, I won my case. Um, Thankfully, at the very last minute, I had a, a lawyer guy who said, I'm going to pass my bar and go back just so I can represent you to help you along. But I did it. So people have been, again, coming to me for advice. Now, Natalie has never called me for advice. She tries to get me on stories to get us off her. Ah, yeah. oh, there's a pit bull ring. You should, you know, your son's a good investigator. Da, da, da. Natalie has been a target of mine for years with the competent authority. When I say target, don't get me wrong. There's mm. no personal vendetta here. Mm as people may think, um, it's a question of the authorities acting on what is known. Um, so I knew that Natalie was getting food donations from big companies, Egan, Purina. Uh, there was a time way back when where she had this store in somebody's basement along with cat food and she didn't take dogs. So she would call me and say you know, she would distribute the excess because another truckload was coming and they had mice running through there. It was awful. Uh, but she had occasionally had given me surplus. She said, if you need, you know, come and pick through and you can take. But over the years, I found out that she was selling this dog food uh, to Sylvie Jean Vest, Laurent Ferrand, and the likes of them. Um, Joanne Lalonde is a name that you may have heard. She had gotten some food from Natalie at cheap prices, deals, you know. In, in between us, I can give you a bag for 10 bucks kind of deal. Yes. No, not for back favors, like, I'll give you some food, food but you then you owe me a favor. So when the cities or the mm-hmm. authorities or MAPAC or whatever is going to okay. inspect, first of all, they always get a heads up through Natalie. That's my, my one and bigger, biggest problem right now, is that Natalie is the center of the link. I thought Barbara was the leader of the ring, Barbara Lisbona. <laughs> But through a lot of investigation on my son's part, it is very obvious that Natalie is the link for food. That's it. And medication. And she medication. has a personal friend has or a, a contact in Pfizer who can that get her meds getting by the meds. box. So she is the one, and I tried to get food donations years ago through yeah. different companies, yeah. and they tell me, well, you have to go through the ARN, Natalie Pinnell. She's the only one. She decides who gets food, who, you know, if Natalie says, yeah, sure, you know, they can be put on the list. So I thought, what is this, Natalie? This was like late 90s. I thought, what is this, Natalie's in charge of food donations? So now that my son is able to, you know, the Internet is it's, it's a wonderful tool for his generation, um, it's obvious that she was the one distributing. I've been asked to see the jean for years. Uh, Laurence Perron has come into the picture uh, around... Recently. Last year, in January. Um, again, the stories of, oh, my God, these... Zoning changes and, and one example, for life. example, from Janine Marose, mm-hmm. who knows Sylvie Jean Vest, she told us it was Laurence's fault and that they live in a trailer home. Uh-huh. When Maggie Shooter came to inspect before the authorities, she visited a two story house. Uh, see. Okay. And she swore to me, Maggie said, I'm telling you, it was her house. I saw it. She showed me her clothes in the closet. Mm-hmm. I personally still to this day think there's a switcheroo with the neighbor, okay. who's also the a city hoarder. Would to the give city us was giving me lots of information, and then once Maggie went, the city basically sent me to hell and told me they were looking into it and that, you know, as long as the dogs were gone, that's all they cared about. Okay. But originally, this guy didn't want the dogs ending up in hiding because we could see. Mm-hmm. They were asking for people, fosters, Barbara called me and said, could you take a... A dog with their pit bull, they have, have puppies, they have parvo. 
what, like, what is it? So she took these puppies, she took them to the vet, these for Hélène de Vichy. So this whole click is, is bigger than I even originally thought. And Natalie controls the food and the men. And Barbara is the one who, who gets has the people. funding for the disaster scenario. Yeah. So you come in, you know, for instance, Natalie knows you guys are coming and her place is horrible and some cats are really sick. She'll pile them up in, con in containers, in carriers, mm -hmm. call Barbara and say, Barbara, you got to take 50 cats. And Barbara will and this is what the volunteers called. at the ARN complain about. There's no room for stray cats, but there's always room for Barbara's friends, friends. who okay. have emergencies. I had a, a situation with two cats, a patient from the Douglas who was placed, and he had two cats and a dog, and of course I placed the dog, but here we are with two cats. And my friend said, Sophie, you got to find me a place. And I said, Raymond, there is no place. There is no place. Yeah. And that is the problem. You call her Cindy, mm -hmm. Cat Shaw, Monica Campos Shelter. Yeah, she the has the taken over, locked the door, changed the lease into her name, but yet is operating under her occupancy permit of Manon Shaw mm -hmm. because Which Monica is Monica afraid Campos. if she tells the city I'm no longer there, they're going to come and seize all the cats and then where she's gone, they're going to die. But Cindy's place has turned into a cat hospital. Cindy's place, these people were hiding Laurence's cats at one point. Natalie was hiding Laurence's cats. Mm -hmm. they, they're all intertwined. The cats at Cindy's have turned, she's turned it into Cindy's cat hospital. They prey on volunteers that are, have mental health issues. We all have mental health issues to a point. I myself suffer from depression. I know, you know, about people who turn to dogs and, you know, it makes their life feel so wonderful because we're helping a soul. Mm -hmm. But these people are, at this point, unable to see the light. Uh -huh. There are people that have been volunteering. Alana, order their sign sign, Alana 2255, There have been people volunteering in these shelters that are now personally attacking us as being the cat killers. We want all these cats to die. We just want to show that only our way is the right way and we want everybody to do like us because, you know, we're the best. And I've never said I'm the best. I do believe I am one of the best. There are very few of us. I think I can count on one hand the rescues that are good rescues. The others are either dog slippers, cat slippers, hoarders, pullers, and it stops there. What happens to these animals, they don't care. They're on the internet, they're doing their thing, they're pulling cats and dogs, dogs are going to die on death row, and it's become out of hand. Rick and I have counted within Natalie, Janine, Monica Campos shelter, Barbara Lisbon has two shelters, her real one and her hidden one, mm -hmm. uh, Joanne Lalonde, which is a girl I know, uh, and uh, a few people, I think Diana Leblanc might be... No, I didn't, uh, we don't have numbers uh, on we her. We counted 1,800 cats involved that we know a lot of, of that are being shifted around every time the soup gets hot, mm -hmm. you know, so... How do they transport these cats? In carriers. They carriers at night? They this all night, they will. They come, they get a bunch of volunteers, like with for people. example, when jo 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 Janine Lalonde, Joanne Joan Lalonde, Lalonde was running away from apartment to apartment, she did that at night at with night carriers. Carriers, she walked. And she okay. moved from the Berger Blanc sector to an SPCA sector in fear that when it does happen, it's at least going to be the SPCA yes, that sees it and not her Berger Blanc. This. this is their um, mentality of. So these cats get sick. These people have no money, mm -hmm. and. My biggest question to the SPC for now is why did Natalie Pinnell get a kid of cat food? Oh, it's probably, it's certainly my fault. Um, uh, when uh, they made it clear that they needed either money for food or food. Or they were going to um, dump the cat. Not necessarily. I wasn't cats. sure what the, the ramifications right. were, but I had not heard of them definitively as a cat order. I had heard of them as a... Strug uh, struggling. Um, that's what they yeah, most people That's what they all see. Fair enough. Uh, and I had not visited them, and I, I hadn't heard anything from uh, my staff that said that they were absolutely uh, bad people. If I had the decision to make over again, I would have done it differently. Um, but the decision was absolutely mine. It wasn't Alana's or anybody else's. I don't know if anybody else would have made a different decision here. Knowing what I know now, I, I wouldn't have made the same decision. What? But um, what I did do was. Um, we had a pile of, uh, a pallet of food that was not Royal Canaan. I don't remember what kind it was. I think it may have been... Mondu Center. It was Mondu, yeah, that's right. They, and it was uh, close to being out of date or something <coughs> like that. So um, when push came to shove, it was a decision I made over five minutes. It was um, um, 
uh, you know, would you would you help us in some way? And I wasn't going to give them money, um, but I figured, well, what could they do with uh, cat food other than use it on uh, use on it on cats? cats. Uh, if they resold it, then um, that wasn't the intent of the that wasn't the intent of the gift. But on the other hand, if they sold it and used that money on sterilizing or medicating their cats, so much the better. If I had to do the whole thing over again, what I probably would say is, um, if we're going to help you, um, then uh, I would like to make the condition be that I meet with you and your board of directors and get a sense of how the SPCA can play a role in helping you get to the point where you're not overwhelmed with cats. And if they said, no, that's, that's a condition okay, that we let, can't live with, then I probably me, wouldn't have bring in the the cut in. Well, I'm going to cut in right there because Natalie, on a personal level, because of the whole Ann Gillibrand thing, when she first called me over the years, yeah. she has called me for different things. And um, I have been to her shelter when she had the shelter on Angus. Uh -huh. And at the time, it was pretty pathetic. She even had found a uh, Pomeranian that she wanted. Oh, he can sit in the shelter. He can stay in the shelter. And one of her volunteers had absolutely forbade it and said, I'm taking this dog and I'm bringing him to Tulsi. This dog is not going to live at your shelter. But I had been to the shelter. Uh, now, as far as sterilization, I can't say whether all of them do inside get sterilized. I know in the beginning, they all did. That mm -hmm. was their goal. So they mm -hmm. didn't want to have litters. Mm -hmm. But now they pick up mommies under balconies with litters or pregnant mommies. Now mm -hmm. they're out of fun. I but they still have Barbara to help out with that. Yes, so for the sterilization, it is very possible that they're controlling their population. In that yeah, case. that I don't deny. Natalie has told me again and again, Sophie, I'm not like you. I cannot place these cats. I do not trust my judgment. There are so many people out there that I would not want them to end up with these cats that I keep them. I'd rather they be here in the shelter mm -hmm. and safe than to end up either in the wrong hands or back on the street. And I had offered her at the time some help, even though I don't know anything about cats. Screening a person as it's not like, are they going to take a dog three times a day out and play his nails regularly? Mm -hmm. It's a long-term commitment. It's, yeah. you know, screening someone to adopt, yeah. whether it's a dog or a cat, it's doable. She just doesn't know how. Yeah. Uh, she is also, it is known that, as I say, we all have mental issues to a point, but... A lot of us are, and if not, should be, on medication. Mm. Uh, Natalie is known not to take her medication. What can we do? What do you think our role should be? I think, first of all, you really got to investigate your, your inspector. I really think that... Assuming that, that is either being done or we know about our concerns there. Because I, right. I, I can't, just could not comment further. Right, right, right. But assuming, that's that's assuming that, 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 assuming that there's something... In. Okay. I would have an inspector, maybe yourself, or Alana, I don't know if legally you have that right to accompany an inspector, but I think you and Alana should see for yourself, and I would suggest bringing with you at least a vet or a vet tech. Because as a cat, as a dog person, I can tell you if a dog looks not right. As a lady who's afraid of cats, very allergic to cats, feel they don't even have a spine. I wouldn't even know what to look for. Do you think that the conditions that we're going to find are... Despicable? Um, yes. You're going okay. to find dying cats. You're going to find cats that are in such horrendous, not necessarily physical shape, but quali quality of life mm -hmm. is just well, not there. quality of life for cats is really difficult to prove. So whether it's d 42 or criminal code, we would need to show... That's what I'm saying, go with a vet. Because as people... As but a well, vet, vet would need to see the physical evidence. They couldn't go with just quality of life. No, right. they would see. It's not a, a vet can actually pick up a cat that is living in jail. Yeah, but you can't determine the quality of life no, but it's a at a legal level. Well, that's, that's because he's living that's in filth, no, that's then it becomes health. a health issue. That's a health. Me as a yeah. person, I can look and say the quality of life here sucks. That doesn't go to court. It's shit, yeah, that but I don't court. notice that this... Sophie, that doesn't go to court. The only thing that can go to court is things that we can measure. But... So if the cat has rhinotracheitis, if it's right. the way. virus, if it's if it's if the animals are um, not only living in a condition that's unhealthy, but manifesting symptoms of unhealth themselves. Right. Right. So they could be living in a barnyard that's not a healthy place to be, but if They're the cat healthy. itself is healthy, right. there's nothing now, we can do. The, so what you're saying, I think, is that 
if we go there, what we're you going to see fine. are conditions that are considered, hang on, hang on, that we are going to see and we could record um, conditions that are consistent with a true animal order. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's not just a little bit. No, 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 no. It would be at the no. same level as Janine Marot. But on a but bigger scale. Janine Marot, the rate operation oh, that's wait, wait, my wait, wait, just got wait, involved That's wait, another wait, topic okay. eventually, but, no, but wait, finish with... Let me just quickly, Janine Marot has been on our list since a long time. We've known of her house in Mascouche being birthed by the city in 97. <laughs> so the fact that the authorities might not be aware is fairly surprising. Okay. If we knew, for example, that the authorities had been following on on Janine for years, there would be some kind of defense to say, you know, we're helping solve the situation. From what I can see, they've been ignoring Janine for the last five years. And now, boom. boom. Now, she's the worst of what I think without having seen her place, because we didn't even have her address or nothing. We just knew about her. And for my pack to make an example out of her, they're telling the others, these are the conditions. And my example is the PRU test in court. That's what I've referred to as it online. PRU had hair, rats. Nothing substantial we went in the P42 court. because we we've been court. hunting other breeders who have more infractions than PRU mm -hmm. but are being left alone because those are registered CKC breeders. So if I'm to compare the evidence that was presented in court because we went to the PRU trial that my pack brought into PRU, none of these rescues passed the test either. Okay. And this is where with the Operation Felix raid, that's where that now puts a president, president. president, president. on what are the conditions that the MAPAC is going to want now. Okay. And that's what my whole argument is, is that at first did I complain that MAPAC wants every rescue to have hospitalized standards? Yeah, for sure, you know, the SPCA that's necessarily that's doesn't that's pass the PRU that's test. That's right. That's right. You know, it's funding that's required and all that. We understand that. But there's a huge difference between the SPCA and these cat hoarders that have no ventilation. Because Pierre Bernardi in 2003 went on the record opposing the these hoarders, the saying the the they might not be cruel. Yes, they love these, can, these animals. They're wait, overwhelmed. Wait, wait, wait. But they breed bacteria by not having the required facilities. And that's where our battle really lays between. Because that Operation Felix, when we, we were in court that day, being gagged on the husband situation that we've been dealing with MAPAC for two years now. That was out of this jurisdiction, so mm -hmm. it was Isabel, Cousin Gonzalez. She's got 50 cats in her house, and she's hoarder. the director. Yeah. Now, she may be a hoarder with lots of money. money. There's a difference between a filthy healthy. hoarder and That's a fine. clean hoarder. You know, somebody but sees 50 cats in a home, they say, oh my God, big time hoarder. The way I see it is if you're able to give them the quality of life they really? deserve, mm -hmm. and you want 50 cats and hairs and cat hair in your tube, that's your, you know, way of life. But she actually put out an APB on me because she was a free So the SQ that was know. here for the safety of her 50 so cat. Okay, and if you've heard about us, you may have heard that with the Husky saga in that shit, we ended up pressing criminal charges. Let's let's stick with one case at a time, okay. otherwise I will get very confused. I think what you're saying is that where the SPC could be helpful here is to in um, to begin an investigation not at the at the union staff level, because for fear of there may be a leak, um, but rather an administrative um, right. investigation. Um, and that that investigation will lead us to uh, see um, uh, a cat order that is not just marginally over the line, um, but well over the line into cat hoarding and not rescue. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Not only okay. play like, for example, I said phone conversations to Alana on Facebook. They hadn't been officially made public yet, but they were sent around Petit Paz has them and all that. I know Petsy Paz has been pushing the SPCA to get involved with what she considered Natalie Pinel, Iman Oshad, which was Monica Campo, and, and Barbara, Barbara Lisbona. Yes. When I started exposing the judgments of Monica Campo, that's when Petsy Paz came for us for our help, 
because the SPCA was telling her, you got to file this to MAPAT. It's out of our hands. We don't want to get involved in this. Has MAPAT, have you asked MAPAT to investigate this? We personally haven't. We have not ourselves have it. People have, and they've been told it's your SPCA. It's like they're throwing each other the bunch. You guys are saying it's MAPAC, MAPAC is saying it's SPCA. But that has been like that for years. Or, yeah. Unless it's a jurisdictional issue, I don't it's see why And it's not, because in the case of the seeds with Abiraton Felix that went down when I was in court being gagged, um, it was the SPR de l'Estrie. Yes. Okay. So I called them to find out why them is not you, because it's your jurisdiction, Laval. It's You're not You're close. Yeah. Their answer... Can I call you back? Their answer to them is, well, uh, to us. because we're better at catching animals than the SPCA Montreal. Okay, now, let's not take me for an idiot. <laughs> you know, that is, <laughs> that's what the inspector who, who was involved in this told He's me. He's a MAPAC inspector. He's a MAPAC mandated inspector, and the reason they were called instead of you is because they're better at catching animals. Now, if Perfect. you read what uh, Janine has to say <laughs> about how it happened, these are all feral cats. So they're chasing them, these cat parts are pounding, I mean, she's describing these poor little cats. Horror you know, stories. Horror story. they're just freaking out, and I'm sure they were <coughs> not too thrilled to catch them. It you know, must have been a free-for-all trying to catch these feral cats. No so I don't that. think it's because they were the best. I'm thinking there's more of maybe a conflict of interest, because Janine has also told me for years now how you guys, the SPCA, and when I say you, you guys, guys the does not mean mm -hmm. you or either old administration, new administration, it's the SPCA, okay. that you guys actually give out a number for stray cats in Laval, or surrender cats in Laval, because you cannot take them, it's not your jurisdiction. And we receive these the, phone we calls get as call well. from the SPCA, so from people who say, oh, the SPCA gave me your number, I found a dog, and you know, I don't want to bring you to the Virgin Block, can you take them? And then I get the info here, I try to get the info there, they don't want to take it unless I give them a dog, that's my, another battle. Mm -hmm. But I did get the word out, and then after three weeks, if nobody's looking for dogs, the dog's neutered and up for adoption. Mm -hmm. So they do that with Janine, the SPCA. They have been giving out her number for years. And so that's one of our questions. And another why example so is... What, what's one of your questions? Why is, is it a conflict of interest that they call this their canton instead of you guys to raid Janine's place? Wh who's conflict? Uh, would you be, in, because, okay, let's put it this way. Here's Some volunteers from Operation Felix have gone on the internet to say Operation Felix is great. I know what I'm talking about. I volunteer at the SPCA Montreal. Oh, well, it's not a conflict of interest. That's just misrepresentation of their authority. But the right. fact that people from the SPCA actually, because she says that all the time, the SPCA sends me cats. They know I'm good. Mm -hmm. So is that why the, my pack would have picked a different SPC? Were you asked? To get involved in Abiyana because she's got the least cats, 80 cats. Why wow, yeah. she do? Everybody's going woo woo. Not only from 100 to 300, to investigate wait, because mm -hmm. we also know about apartments that yes. these people are renting apartments to store cats in. Because since our judgment that says in the uh, residence is inviolable, voilà. now they're in uh, residence. There so we have there. Barbara Lisbona calling us saying, oh my God, my pack is at my window. They've taken pictures Thank of you. my cats. They have more than five cats. They're telling me I have to let them in. They don't have a warrant. And so why is nothing happening? Everybody always says, we can't just go in and do an inspection. We can't. Yesterday, again, I had the city inspectors at my door. Yeah, and we were charging the city with contempt of court. We're charging them with contempt They forced their cell thing without a warrant. The police came back with them, when I refused access, they forced their way in to let these inspectors take pictures, and they were supposedly building inspectors, and they came in, and then they left me a notice that I'm in contravention of the C-10 by having more than two dogs with no tax. See on the back for info. So you're telling me this because you think they should do the same thing with... I'm saying, why, when because it comes to example, me, anybody can come in wait, and force their way this. in and... When the Huskies in Le Chute started, we called my pack and we told them, your law allows you to do a seizure, wait 90 days, do the medical investigation that needs to be done, and then determine if you can give the dogs back or lay criminal charges. We have that my, my pack phone call recorded where she tells us, no, we can't. 
We told them, yes, you can. You wrote the law. Learn how to enforce the law. They told us, no, we can't do this. We, can't, we need a warrant. A week later, they seized PRU 500 and some dogs. They put them in the city that we're banned from. We're banned from the Now city. I do some digging up. I find the Montreal Hunt Club is the land in question. Montreal Hunt Club has a long history with the CSPCA and the Molson family. With us? Yes, the Molson, Mr. McMolson, uh, uh, forget the first name, but Molson, who yep. died on the Titanic, yep. was the president of the CSPCA. Oh, good lord, 100 years ago, okay. Yes. Yes, oh yeah, and yeah. I was trying to think it was the last but bunch. Was <laughs> no, 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 no. So, it's just you know, here. Let's not, you know, Hunt it, Club, Montreal SPCA, you know. Yes, now I find that Linda Roberts. I can't find out where these dogs are. Now, we have... I mean, I know all the history from Linda Robertson to uh, the well, beginning of the Titanic, you know, yeah. because I remember telling the SPCA on their Facebook page, here's the plaque in, uh, on the Mount Royal. Yeah, yeah, you well, people right. were not even oh, aware yeah. of yeah. the plaque on the Mount Royal. So I was like, come on, this is all in your history books, man. <laughs> and, you know, why is that plaque not acting? Because the influential the people were there originally. This T42. Now, when I asked them, just get a warrant, and they said, we don't just get one like that. No, you don't. Uh, Wait. The PRU trial, they had come in on that day to, for an inspection. They were not allowed inside. Mm -hmm. The lady said, no, no, you can look outside, but you're not going into the house. I also wanted to go into the house. They left. They came back at, a couple hours later with the whole truck set and ready to seize, mm -hmm. and they had had a, a warrant. Yeah. And so in court, I heard how they got this warrant. Mm -hmm. For one, they knew that day that the local judge was not in. It was his day off. He wasn't in that day. You're getting way too specific for me. What I'm I saying is that they made a phone okay, call and said, that. we're not allowed in, so we need a telemanda because we suspect something is going on in the house. They got their warrant within an hour, they were there with trucks, and they seized everything well, out of it. What there. I don't want to do is to, we can get a warrant like that. We can also get an entire case of 800 cats thrown out like that if yes. the defense attorney says, you've got your warrant in ways that are not consistent with probable cause. All of the evidence is fruit from a poison tree. We're throwing the whole thing out. They get their cats back, and the SPCA needs to reimburse them. So we don't want to get into one of those. If, if we're going to get into a case, it needs to be rock solid, especially if it's if it's 800 cats. But this is where the loophole... not walk solid with MAPAC. I went to the trial with know, TRU. They wanted a half a million but to return the dogs, or they were going to charge them. I, I can't do anything about what... I can't do anything no. about MAPAC. I don't represent them. Right. Who rep can, who's uh, what, the representative here? Daniel Davenport? No, no, me. You're no, the no, MAPAC no. inspector? Just no, 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 no. Wait, nobody no. represents... MAPAC has hired somebody here. No, no, no. Not even? No. Okay. Um, no. Here's the only relationship between MAPAC and the SPCA. MAPAC is controls the um, authority right. to investigate cases of P42 as right. it applies to the, the provincial right. code. So we hire uh, an investigator. His name is uh, Lucan. Lucan then gets trained to our standards. He additionally gets trained to, my, to MAPAC, um, and they sign him off after a two-day training period. It's three days in court, basically. So. And he, Lucan, is still paid for by us. He's our staff member. Um, he has to work within the boundaries of P42 and Provincial Code when he's investing P42. When he's working on um, criminal, criminal code, code is, the, yeah. the thing is, and when he works on federal issues or advocacy issues, the uh, the landscape is much bigger than MAPAC, but nobody here is paid for by MAPAC. So we have no... That's news to me. Well, it, it is... MAPAC never says they hire someone. They just say that the inspectors are uh, now from the SPCA. MAPAC so inspectors. That's, that's you know, why it was that that now because because they, when they, was got, the when they stopped on a month, Right, exactly. Then what the, the reason they, they, they said they could stop it is that um, as I understand charges. this anyway, that Anima Quebec was started at a time when there were not enough inspectors in the province okay. in order to... Now this goes back to the Bernardi... I think you know the story behind the whole... Story, because Bernardi told us... Don't, don't, don't no. tell me the no. story. No, yeah. um, that's it. But what I'm telling you is that Anima Quebec dissolved itself we because we laid criminal charges on them on Article 180 oh. of the Criminal Code for I don't failure. Really like that. Well, 
It doesn't, but it doesn't matter. Doesn't it doesn't matter. Everything. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No, what, it, what our job is, is to go take the information that you've given us and to you've determine and to determine whether or not uh, there are charges that we can, we can apply. What I will do is um, I will not include our normal investigative route because you're saying that there may be a leak? There definitely is. Okay. We've got it. I understand. So, um, I'm not going to include that route. I will I will keep it between Alana and myself, and we will see what we can come up with. But we, I can't promise anything. I don't know what it is that we're going to see, and I don't know if there's anything that we're doing in suggesting this that keeps us from doing the investigation. I have no investigative authorities whatsoever. Alana... I don't know whether she can do an investigation. Uh, I think she can. Uh, I know the union would have a fit, but I don't mind having the union have a problem with us. I do mind if Mapak has a problem. I think she's signed off on Mapak, so, so I think we're good there. Um, well, I believe Alana is on their board of directors. No, no. that was Karim Gonzalez. That was Karim Gonzalez? Okay. All these people who are all intertwined with me. If we do the investigation, because we're really good at that. Because we have... My pack sent us on a goose chase, okay. and then I got shot at. They said, if you can br bring us the proof, we'll start an investigation. I bring them the proof, they say, oh, well, you know, there's nothing we can do. If you do the investigation, what you're about to say. Yeah. Can if you guys take our proof as valid proof or a, a reason to really get things. a warrant yeah. and then go and inspect? For example. You, uh, the, uh, as I understand it, what you would be in effect would be a witness. What a witness can do to a uh, uh, to a crime, to a breach of P42, to a to any other witness to a criminal act, is you can sign what's called an affidavit. In signing that affidavit, that if it's a strong enough affidavit, that gives us grounds to seek a search and seizure warrant. That's what happened. Now, let me bring in an, an, an example. Here we've got hours and hours and hours of phone calls with Monica Campo, who talks. That is, this is evidence that can be submitted without a witness, because Sophie uh, allows this conversation to go public. Where she, according to the P42, if you enable, facilitate, or da 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 da, you could also be accounted for the act that MAPAC is charging somebody else with, which is the encouragement. If you encourage the cruelty or neglect by omitting to do anything about it, so we have phone calls of Monica, how she has firsthand accessorized these people by enabling them, okay. saying, oh, when Natalie Pinel had the SPCA come in and inspect her nah, 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 in St. Pierre, I took all her cats and then nah, nah, nah. that's yeah. en cas de la justice to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. So then we've got the ARN who's supplying food to Janine Larose. Now, Operation Felix does a raid on Janine Larose. We've got the evidence that the ARN supplies Janine Larose with the food. Therefore, they're enabling this by supporting it, the cruelty. Now we've got Monica telling us, oh, I know for sure that Natalie Pinel's cats are half dying. Barbara told me she goes there to help her. This is the type of evidence we have. You know, everybody is, is and, and Monica will just fill the beans. I've talked to these people. They always count on me. I'm the bright woman. I'm the one who does it right. I'm the one who knows how to fight for the animals' rights and my rights to have these animals and da da da. I'm like, you know, the, oh, let's look up to Sophie. But yet, now that the sh shit hit the fan because we're exposed, I'm tired of closing my eyes. I've tried and tried and tried to go to the competent authorities for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And nothing is moving in its worth. Now we're talking that. Has Natalie anybody inspected them at all? Have they many a time, Matak. Many a time. But every time they say it's okay. The, the ARN, well, according to the ARN, they've been inspected by the SPCA, they've been inspected by Matak, they've been inspected by Hagen, by Purina, Moldu representatives. And uh, they compare themselves, oh, we're like best friends in Treehouse in Chicago. Yeah. I'm like, there's a huge mean? difference. Huge, huge, huge you read difference. The email because I was on their email list until they realized I was. Yes, elite, I've been exposing now the volunteers' emails. We've got yes. volunteers describing how on La Saint Jean they were out there cleaning the walls, and at chaque coup de chiffon, c'était comme un arc-en-ciel, les murs changeaient de couleur. You know. And when Alana was sending those emails through Petit Paul, she replies, "Oof, you need to send this to Mapac." Mapac says, "Come here." Petit Paul 
tells me that my PAC is saying there's nothing we can do, uh, you need to start with the SPCA. Then we've got other rescue groups that are telling us, oh, my PAC told them there's no SPCA, fine, call your local police Police. department. Mm. That's the new thing. That's what my PAC is doing. Now, okay, this was also during the very first three months of Anima Quebec closing. Now, we've officially told my PAC, Take, look into all these names because I've released the, this information publicly now. So they're all screaming defamation, defamation. I'm telling them, bring it on. Nobody has the guts to challenge what I'm saying because it's all true. And you know, we've been literally accused, flat out accused, and also congratulated, depending on which, on which side they're of on. The fence. Of this Janine Naroz raid, of the Hassan City. And yet she's, she's the only out. one. We, didn't we have had no address. She's always hiding. She's always telling me, Sophie, I don't know. She Nobody tells knows where us. I, do my I don't have a hydro night. bill. Don't follow me. I didn't even now, have. I, I'm, I'm assuming that we have an address, but. Yes, well, I, I now I have it as well. well what is the address you suggesting that we go to? Oh, uh, well. I sent any sense we'd have to. Do you have, uh, Natalie? It's called Cat Lovers Rescue. I, I have it on it while it's on the charity listing. If, if you can send it Yes, to I can send this all by email. Okay. Uh, because there's an, an, and, an any supporting Cindy. material that you have yes. that would help us get started. Yes, okay. I'll now send the whole file because I wasn't sure. No, no, but. But if you can send enough that I feel we can get to where we can at least visually confirm visual, that there's a right. problem, everything else follows after that. I right. think the, 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 at the same time, they should because you can't investigate one. Okay. If you do, I would assume you hadn't seen the pictures of Louise Gagnon that I released. No, forget Louise. I'm talking about Cindy's. Cindy's new hospital for cats. Okay. Yeah. Okay, with the beams and the wires hanging. But that is also the the one place where I will say most likely has the least evidence when comparing it to Janine. As far as cleanliness, but we're not talking cleanliness in this case. Remember, she's a doctor. She plays doctor. She injects them with convenia. To keep them from getting cold. She right. Has but she was willing to let us in, then she didn't. They're, yeah, they're moving like, to push on the ladder to yeah. make him pee every day. He's been there for yeah. seven years. You have to do that with not, uh, okay. But I mean, I'm not convinced Cindy's place is necessarily the first place. No, I think it should be done. You know, they're involved easily. in the enabling because they've taken cats from Sylvie Jean Vres, they've taken cats from, from Canal before the authorities arrive. So they facilitate the network. Because you, you can't really compare Cindy's place with Louise Gagnon. No, because first of all, Cindy's is only cats and it's indoor, and Louise Gagnon is a decrepit old barn. But as right. far as what I saw in the animals at Louise's, yes, like we said, living conditions are one thing. Her dogs are nice and chunky, their hairs are nice, they're not right. all decrepit. The only one is her 14-year-old pit bull that's a little bit thin and whatnot, but that's a 14-year-old pit bull. Yeah. If you hear my so talk, and the only one in Montreal is Cindy at Cindy, this point now. Her cats are just literally agonizing in cages because she refuses to get the treatment needed. She decides on her own. I mean, we have all this on well, tape. For example, know? the very first day when we call Monica, she tells us, "Oh, Cindy stole 300 of my cats by changing the lock." We confront Cindy. She tells us there's only 150 cats. Then we confront Monica. She doesn't know how many well, cats she, she has. Well, probably about 200 because they're dropping like flies. Uh, and, and, the, and, the, and these cats are all in different locations. Like no, well, no, these are all in one location, one location right next to the Berger Blanc. 800? All the no. Years. No. These are about uh, three, 300. Well, anywhere from three to 150. It's hard for me to understand the, the global part. You okay, I've counted over 2,000 cats altogether. within that network okay. that are in warehouse in about five to seven different locations. Let's put it this way. Both of these places, Natalie's Live and... Cats. Yes. Yes, indeed. There's anywhere from 150 to 300 in each place. Right. Just with those two. Natalie Pinnell admits to 300 on news reports. Huh? When Hagen offered that building for Natalie Pinnell, she admits to having 300 plus 300 cats. 300 cats. And she doesn't place them. She we know that. But them. we die off, but she takes more. So she's probably averaging and 300. And there's about five different locations? Well, the ARN has two locations. One we're aware of. Originally, one. we're aware of 600 cats in the network of the ARN. Now, most likely 300 under the La Roche shel- shelter, I mean, uh, the Carrière shelter, yeah, yeah. and there's another shelter on the La Roche, which apparently has the cats that are up for adoption. Those are the cats she brings to the Mondou event for her adoption day. The other shelter is just there. 
a hospital. He volunteers. Then people. we've got oh, reports from this. drivers that in one week she can overload a foster home with 30 cats. Mm -hmm. And they already have 30 some cats of their own, these foster homes. So then from a week's worth of being a foster home for the ARN, you've got 60 cats in your house. And all they do is provide food. Now, we've got an example of Dale Kirk, who lived at the ARN shelter. We've got Dale Kirk, who lived at Imanosha. We've got Dale Kirk, who lived with Natalie <laughs> Pinel. And then Monica goes, oh, she, she, she was out in a barn pissing in a bucket, and she called me and said, oh, my God, I need room for the cats. No, 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 no. So Monica said, okay, come on down. With 30 cats. With 30 cats. She arrived, she with, arrived 100. with 100 plus. And she says, you so know, this they're facilitating. Not well. She, she lived in a barn, slept in her car, and pissed in a bucket. So I offered her a room. She had her room, Dale's room with her cat. Our argument is, send the authorities again after these people. Enough is enough, you know. There's so much help we can provide. And I have and been aware of this since I met Barbara probably around 98. Cause I started and we thought days. she was there. I, I always called her the, the, head of the, the club. Leader. The, the, yeah, the leader. She's not right. the ringleader after all. Turns, Turns out we've got Louise Gagnon and the Robertson. Robertson are the ones now who I understand the big picture. You know, I've I understand why the Berger Blanc and the politicians don't want the no-kill no kill shelters. They're talking about Mia Wolf and Louise, uh, Linda Robertson. I was shocked to find out that Linda Robertson was once the director of this SPCA in the 70s or 80s. Really? Yeah. Yes. She started off as a volunteer for Louise Gagnon originally yeah. in saint Annie in saint Hilaire. saint Hilaire, yeah. And if one... What happened here at the SPCA, I don't know. But now I understand why, why she, she opened her own place. the SPCA Monteregie that's not my pack be connected and why I've oh. always known through Sophie and others that something is wrong at that SPCA. They hoard to a degree. Mm -hmm. Their kennels are outside in winter. All the time. And, and they live at their adoption market. days are like three hours a, a week. That, four hours. So, so that fits four? within the lines of the institutional hoarder yeah. descriptions that you find from best friends and really? movies. So, so, and then you have people like Linda Robertson who, in my opinion, I'm sorry, but everybody admires the no-kill SPCA. I've been there. Before the renovation, before I've been and there. Mm -hmm. I've heard of Linda for years, and I tell people, do not send your animal mm -hmm. there. You're better off sending them to SPCA Montreal than to send them there, because if, for whatever reason, he makes that at Montreal, great. If he doesn't, well, at least he's out of his misery. You send him there, he could spend 10 years there until he dies living outside. She's one of the biggest hoarders. And now what we're realizing is this goes back so far, and they're all interconnected. They're all helping each other, you know. So the big picture is that all of these places need to be targeted mm -hmm. pretty much simultaneously, infiltrated. Which uh, is almost know. impossible because of the scale of yeah, the operation. Yeah, but like you go to one, on one day, you know she's going to call the other one and say, hey, That's it. It's I've to been inform the authorities of where, the, where the missing cats go, because, for example, my sources at PETA are telling me that MAPAC is searching for 300 missing cats at the ARN. If I know where the 300 missing cats could have disappeared to overnight, because MAPAC recommended that Euthanasia. these 300 cats should be euthanized. Then, poof, they, they come back to inspect, their, the cats are gone, there's no euthanasia reports, nobody knows where these cats went. That's when MAPAC started hunting the so-called apartments that Barbara is renting in the na find out that the SPCA volunteers, when she was also a volunteer at the SPCA, rented her an apartment and sent her off with like 30, 30 cats, cats before the ice storm. The beginning of Barbara so and her hoarding. They're telling me, oh, look at La Marche and Pinap. They're using the same tactics that the puppy mills are using to hide from Mapac. Janine Laros has been doing this for years. She claims she has a bounty on her head from Pierre Couture. <laughs> yeah. Now that I'm reading her, I've seen her file. All women are cool. Yeah. And you know, like I said, we all yeah, have... Yeah, had reason to seize her animals back then. So, wait. For years, I always saw Janine Larose as one of the few hoarders who had a head on her shoulder and had something Good interesting to say. Now that I find out that Pierre Couture did rape these animals, the city found dead cats within the walls and they had to burn the house down, now we're saying, wait, you're not pr practicing what you preach. And this whole file that you have in 2008... 
is blackmail for Pierre uh, Bernatti and Couture, and SPA Canada sends to infiltrate her that film, word for word, which she wrote in 2008. Yeah, yeah. So the SPVM, you know, Joanne mm -hmm. Lalonde, I mean, uh, Janine Larose and uh, Louise Auger went to the SPVM with their proof. SPVM said, we're not going to press any criminal charges. We believe SPA Canada hired both people. That's why there's a lot of people saying, I don't know. When's the last time SBA Canada was involved in looking at the conditions in the caps? They don't. SBA Canada stands on corner. I call them the no, news. No, no, I understand. But, uh, but you, you just said that they had infiltrators. Yes, yes. at Berger Blanc. Well, well no, no, at Berger Blanc or at Berger Blanc? Blanc. Blanc. They oh, had two of yeah. them. Yes, yes, that's right. But the filming guy and the stabbing guy. What I'm saying, what, what, what I'm saying is that Janine Lavo's description is word for word. What in 2008, eight, what we saw what in that video was filmed four oh, years later. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, you're confusing me. Right, you, you guys Sorry. are confusing the hell out of me. I got it. It's a very complex. Too much, it's very it complex. Is. It's too much information. Right, right. What I need to do is to talk to Alana, um, and I'll talk to Anthony. Hello, little kitty. And um, we'll figure out what we can do. It starts with your email to me, Rick. Okay. Um, any right. information that you can give me. Keep it confined yeah, yeah. to a manageable thing that right, I can right. take my teeth in. Exactly, in terms of I do understand the issue of, of um, I do understand the issue of um, if we um, uh, if we get to the point where a raid is necessary, obviously we may, may have to do some something simultaneously. But long before we get to that, yes, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know. want to be able to see yes. that what we're talking about is truly an illegal activity as opposed to um, something that is that the court system or the public would, throw out. Right. would simply say it's a rescue organization and sometimes the cat doesn't poop inside the litter box, but that doesn't make it the animal. Right. right. So it has to be a, a flagrant, not, well, it doesn't have to be flagrant, but it has to be very clear. Right. That and that's why I wasn't sure if we were going to just go public with everything that we built up. Or if we were going to involve MAPAC and your SPCA, yeah. for example. I have, if, until you do, if you do go public, that's fine with us, what, incidentally. What, what I mean, though, is, yes, because I, I know the PR thing where the SPCA doesn't want to be attacking the community. Because it is common. No, there, there, there is a PR. The, the only reason that we would be hesitant, um, uh, I have no problem in seizing animals from a hoarder. Right. Um, uh, years and years ago, 20 years ago, we had a we had lots of problems with that, incidentally, because um, the public would often see the porter as the good guy, and right. actually, yes. and all we could do with the 800 cats was to euthanize them anyway. Right. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. so that made life hard for people like Anthony, who of had course. to spin it to the public. We're no longer concerned with that. We, it's very clear because that 99% of our donors understand the difference between being a true rescue organization and being a right. porter. Times have changed. Our donors are more sophisticated. I have no problem right. with seizing animals from a hoarder. What I do have problems with is entering into something where we seize and they start again. 600, 600 to 2,000 animals, most of which will have to be euthanized, okay. and then lose the case. Yes, that I totally problem. agree. Okay. That I totally so that's agree. that's my worry. Yeah, right. but it, you it see, this is where I, I woke up that, okay, maybe there is a possibility in some change because of the Janine Larose. I wrote my article on November, October, October 24th. 24th, November 25th, they were raiding her, and they claim the file has been open for 30 days. Now, all these cat hoarders are saying, I've got blood on my hands for making the complaint. Hey, out of all these people, she's the only one who no, I did not have a physical target. address. <laughs> <laughs> and my complaints, when I call my pack and I want to make a complaint, we've released those phone calls ah. to show that the complaint has been filed, and we want to follow up on what's going to happen. So... The comparison is if Operation Felix and MAPAC has a case, then they've got a big case along their lines of the others. Because Janine Lagos has always been known that she's the worst. In St. Sophie, she got raided. In St. Masco, she got raided. Going back to Janine, right, when yeah. I spoke to the SPA on the oh, Lake Thank you. They were aware of their history. How they, they were involved because they're better at catching animals. I said to the inspector, how do I get you guys, or do we get my pack to mandate you guys to do the others? Natalie, mm -hmm. oh, he says, well, we can't. You have to contact your SPC. It's not our jurisdiction. 
And I said, well, it's not your jurisdiction, but neither is Laval. And they go, oh, we, we oh. didn't inspect. We didn't inspect. We just, we just assisted. assisted because we're the best at catching animals. We're better than monkeys. Right. I don't. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but you know, but like that is their version. Like, makes sense with your life. Um, so yeah, it boils down to this has been going on for <coughs> 15 years that I know of. Rick is digging up information going back to the 70s and 80s, mm-hmm. and it's got to stop. Um, you know, these people don't let us in. They say, who are you? We don't have to let you in. No, we're the ones exposing this. So if you want to let it in, the worst of them all is Dino. Well, you know, we let Dino let in. us in. We popped in on her. But Cindy won't let us in. Barbara won't let us in. She's not even returning our phone calls. But then I've got puppy mills like Pia us. They're opening the door saying, look at this. So this is where I'm seeing a rescuers operating in more secrecy than the puppy mill. Then we've got a problem with just the fact that they're denying because, yes, I've made a lot of accusations, and if I'm wrong, proven wrong in the future, I have no problem supporting these people in the future, saying I was wrong, and here's the scenario. But, but they don't want they're not to giving me that chance to prove you know, me wrong. They're <laughs> making pages on the Internet, oh, the truth about Rick Cunyon for you and his mother told his dog it off shit. And this wrong. I know, it is That's wrong. it. But what I'm saying is that, you know... It needs to stop because these people help each other, protect each other. They're all closing their eyes. They're all gone cuckoo and think that to see these animals like that is okay. They're better off than being hit by a car or mm-hmm. frozen. There's a limit to, you know, what's Where's better off. And what I'm seeing now, and I have been seeing, and it's not getting any lower, it's getting bigger. Yep. Less resources, no more money. Mm-hmm. Cats are being more and more neglected. What I've always heard about uh, the rescue network um, in Montreal that with the with the um, exception of as you say maybe half a dozen, um, is that it is surrounded by mystery, yes, uh, yes. insubstantiated drama, yes. yes, accusations, and somewhere buried in there is the truth, yes, right, and I don't know, and and this is why I, don't, I, I, on, I don't know what the truth is, but I. I see ample evidence of all the other things. Yeah. And this is why I don't know <laughs> yes, the truth I, either, but this is why I like to expose, make us think out of it, because then I've got these people like Janine LaRose and Natalie Pinel coming on my Facebook, bashing me, shooting themselves in yeah, the foot with what they're saying. <laughs> you know, she's telling me, oh, the SPCA inspected, and she shows, shows me a picture of the SPCA guy delivering the food, and there's like 80 cats bouncing around his head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, is this really what you want to portray to me? You know what I mean? It's like, here is the proof that you're overwhelmed. These cats are bouncing for attention yep. on a stranger. So. And they're all totally against euthanasia. And the minute you talk about helping them place, oh, no, 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 this one, that one, when you talk about the possibility of a seize or a rape, right away they're seeing all the cats being euthanized. Like, there's no in-between in for them. Like, yeah. there's no in-between mm-hmm. for them. It's like, oh, no, they're all going to be killed. It so is. let's keep them all. So we... We'll we send you that email. It, it starts with... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and include as much. based on that, um, uh, I'll take the next step. Obviously, you know Alana has to fit into this somehow, right, right. or she can't be here. That's but yeah, but I would love would have, would have been to, if anything, give me even a call, because she knows some of these yeah. things. I've known Alana since she was a student. Mm. Because yeah. we she feel was, that we... so good for Quebec, and then she couldn't pass her bar, she went to Ontario, and then poof, a year or so later, oh, Alana's taken over. Because let me ex- put this context in, is we were warned by Nicole Joncar not to trust Alana. Because Alana had started helping Nicole against the lawsuit with MAPAC for uh, Animal Quebec not doing his job with versus La Marche and Pinard. And then she dropped, so then Nicole tells us, ah, I don't trust her anymore, she's turned on us. No, no, no. But now that I know Nicole Jean Cass and that I've seen the facilities in the barn, drama, I can understand why she wouldn't yeah. turn on Nicole right. but now. That's what it is. And I that's compared PRU versus Nicole's barn, saying, Nicole, your barn doesn't pass. And now, oh my God, I've turned on them as well. When I'm telling them, why should a rescue who has the possibility of fundraisers not be able to provide more care than a puppy mill? Mm-hmm. 
know, if they were so secretive, they would be out there and they would be able to get donations. They would let people come into their facility. Very hard. It Very is. Hard. To be restless or and that's <laughs> what we found out, unfortunately. Hey, you little kitty. Um, Rick, when do you think you'll be able to be in touch with us? I'll send you that email within by tomorrow, hopefully. Okay. Like, I'm going to start working on it today because I've got all this information in pieces online, okay. so I'm going to concentrate on everything that, obviously, within your jurisdiction, uh, you know, uh, Louise Gagnon, she's out of the, the picture right now, but the evidence, like, I'll send you the phone calls of uh, Monica, I think that should be my start, is to send you those phone calls from me. Right. Send me I can... Okay. the most significant part. Right. Something I can't say no to. Makes yes, it yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Thank right. Thanks so much for coming. Right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye.